Good morning, Calvary. This is Pastor Chad here with your word for the day on this beautiful Wednesday. Hey, what is the most special meal that you have ever had? A uh, special occasion, a special event. If you are watching this with somebody or uh, going to talk about it afterwards, uh, what was that one dinner uh, that is most memorable in your life? Uh, I've been asked that question before, and my answer was uh, uh, right before I went on my very first international mission trip, and and I took Meralda out, and it was a fancy meal, fancy restaurant. We were young, uh, only been married a couple of years, and I'm getting ready to go away for two weeks. And, uh, and it was uh, not the kind of meal we've ever had before. We've had some that nice since, but up to that point, that was like the most expensive meal we'd ever had, and uh, it was significant because I was leaving. Uh, today, we're talking about a meal, the Passover meal specifically, and it's also the meal where Jesus instituted what's called the Last Supper, uh, what we celebrate when we take communion. And so this is a special meal, maybe the most special meal in all Christendom. And uh, it was a special meal for them as Jews because it was the Passover meal. Now, if you're not familiar with the Passover and what they were celebrating, the Passover meal is that meal that, that the Jews celebrate once a year, even to this day, to remember the Passover event where God delivered them from slavery in Egypt. And so uh, if you don't know the story, you can read it in Exodus. But... Um, they were instructed to, to kill a lamb and sprinkle the blood over the doorpost so that the death angel would pass over their house. And, and if somebody didn't do that, which the Egyptians didn't do that, then the firstborn in every household died. And so God saved the firstborn, saved the household, and set them free through the blood of the lamb. That's the meal that Jesus and his disciples gather to celebrate. And it's found in Mark chapter 14, verses 12 through 26. I'm not going to read all those verses, but Jesus sends the disciples to go prepare the meal. They gather to celebrate the meal. And then during the meal, Jesus takes bread and he breaks it and he says, this is my body. This is my body broken for you. And then he takes the cup and he says, this cup is my blood it's the new covenant, and it's shed for the forgiveness of sins. And, and we celebrate that supper to remember Jesus' death on the cross, to remember his resurrection that gives us life eternal, to remember that God loves us and demonstrated that love through the sacrifice of his son, who John the Baptist called the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And I love the symbolism that is wrapped up in communion because there in that moment of remembering Jesus' death and resurrection, there in that moment, uh, we are invited into the life of Jesus. In John chapter 6, Jesus is teaching and he says, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And the Jews were offended because they're like, that's cannibalism and we're against that. But what Jesus was saying is, is if you're really going to be one of mine, then you've, you need to participate in my life, in my death, and in my resurrection. And so whenever you take communion, whenever we pause to remember, whenever we celebrate uh, the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, we are entering into that life with Jesus. We're not actually eating his body and his blood, but we're remembering that sacrifice and we're saying, Jesus, I have faith in you. You've changed my life, and I'm committing myself to be your follower once again. So I hope that helps you understand when we gather and we celebrate the Last Supper, or we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we celebrate communion. I hope that helps you to understand that it's that symbol of Jesus being the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And it's that invitation from Jesus to come and be part of his body, his life. God bless, and I hope you have a beautiful day.